Welcome to the second part of the problem solving session for week 2 for the course surface water hydrology. It has been taken by Professor Dr. Rajiv Mehti from the Department of Civil Engineering IIT Kharagpur. I am the TA Amit Srivastava and today in this session we will be focusing on solving numerical problems on adequacy of rain quiche station and frequency analysis of point rainfall. So let's see these two parts. <clears throat> this, these are the topics that will be covered today. And here is the third problem. And, and kindly note that this is the video which is in the sequence of uh, the previous video. And this, this is actually the lecture series of the uh, and, and the follow up of the previous video where we solved problems on precipitation data quality check. And now here the focus will be uh, on the remaining two concepts that is the adequacy of rain cage station and frequency analysis of the point rainfall. So let's read the question number three. A catchment has six rain gauge stations. In a year, the annual rainfall record by cages is as follows. So these are the station A, B, C, D, E, F, and these are the corresponding rainfall received in each of the station in the units of centimeter. So the first part of this problem is determine the standard error in estimating mean rainfall in the existing rain cage. Okay, so this is very crystal clear that we need to find out the standard error in estimating the mean rainfall. And the second part of this problem is for a 10% error. So now here the error is already given that is 10%. So for a 10% error in estimating the mean rainfall, calculate the optimal number of rain gauge stations in the catchment. So in the second part, we are required to find out how many rain gauge stations are in reality required for the given conditions. So let's see how to solve such problems. First part of solving this problem is to find out the mean precipitation. So it is very simple. It is just arithmetic average and we have obtained here as 151.8 centimeter. In the second step, let's find out the standard deviation. So uh, I have arranged uh, the data in this sequence. These are the station number. It is 1 to 6. Here are the station name ABCDEF. These are the corresponding values of the rainfall received at each station. And this is the average rainfall that we have identified as 151.8 centimeter. This is the table for mean precipitation and now we have identified the standard deviation using this formula and this, these are the values of the standard deviation. Next, so how we are actually finding the standard deviation? So in the, in here in the previous table, if I would like to show you the previous table here, we have just obtained uh, the B minus B bar whole square. So, so this is not the formula for standard deviation. We will be using utilizing these values for finding the standard deviation. So here, uh, this is the formula to obtain the standard deviation, uh, which is P minus P bar, old, P bar whole square divided by M minus one. Here M is the number of rain gauge stations or, or these stations that are available and using which we will be finding out the total rain gauge station required at the end. So substituting all those values here, the, we get the standard deviation as 44.8 centimeter. When we get in the step three, we will be required to find out the coefficient of variation CV. Let's see how to find out CV. CV is obtained as the ratio of the standard deviation by mean rainfall. So we now know both the values that is 44.8 divided by 151.8 into 100. So we get the coefficient of variation as 29.5. Now in the step four, we will be required to find out the standard error, which is what is the requirement of the first part of this problem to find the standard error in the estimation of the mean. So let's see how to find out the standard error. It is obtained as the ratio of coefficient of variation CV divided by under root M, which is the number of stations. So we now know both these values substituting, we get 12.1% as the standard error. So in this way, we have, we have solved the first part of this problem. Now let's see how to solve the second part of the problem. In the second part of the problem, we need to find out the optimum number of rain gauges in the catchment when the error is limited to 9% that is given in the problem. So epsilon is equal to 9. So how to find out the optimum number of rain gauge? Here is the equation. This capital N is equal to CV upon epsilon uh, to the whole square gives uh, the optimum number of rain gauges. So substituting this value N, uh, we get 39.5 divided by 9 whole square is equal to 10.8 that is 11. So here the optimal number of linkage required is 11. But kindly note if it is asked in the problem to find out the additional number of linkages required, 
then our response will be 11 minus 6 which is equal to 5 because already 6 station rain case stations were there so subtracting the 6 from the optimum number of rain case required we get the additional number of rain cases required which is 11 minus 6 is equal to 5 i hope you were able to follow this problem now let's move ahead and solve the last problem of the problem solving session for week 2 this is uh, on the concept of frequency of point rainfall that will be the problem for you data analysis on the maximum one day rainfall depth at new delhi indicated that a depth of 500 mm had a return period of 80 years determine the probability of a one day rainfall depth equal to or greater than 500 mm occurring for these four different conditions so the first condition is once in 25 successive, successive years second condition is three times in 25 successive years third condition is not at all in 25 successive years and the fourth condition is at least once in 25 successive years this should be d so now let's find out the probability of a one day rainfall depth equal to or greater than 500 mm for these four conditions so these are the uh, maximum possible four conditions that we have taken into account so this one problem exclusively provides information about all the four conditions that we have to take into account to solve the problem on frequency of point rainfall right so in the step one here we need to find out the probability of occurrence of a event denoted by p of a random variable rainfall in this case whose magnitude is equal to or excess of specified magnitude x and which is nothing but given by p is equal to 1 by t here t is the time rate so p is equal to 1 by 80 80 is what the time rate which is given to us so the value came as 0 0.0125 so the probability of the event not occurring will be q is equal to 1 minus p and 1 minus p we have already obtained as 0 0.0125 so q we get 0 0.9875 i hope you were able to follow the step one now let's move ahead to step two where we are supposed to find out the probability of occurrence of the event r times n successive years using binomial distribution so this is the formula that we need to use that is obtained via binomial distribution so substituting the first case of this problem so in the step 3 we have taken the first case that is case a where once in 25 successive years condition was given to us so in this case what we are supposed to do is to find out the probability of occurrence of the event r equal to 1 because it is given once in 25 successive years so r is equal to 1 and n is equal to 25 here the 25 successive years is nothing but n with regards to binomial distribution equation so p we have already obtained that is 0 0.0125 q we have already know 0 0.9875 so substituting the values of r n p and q in this equation and solving it we get the probability of occurrence of once in 20 successive years is 0 0.231 i hope you were able to follow the first part of this problem so in the similar fashion let's go ahead and solve the remaining parts as well here in the step four we are solving the second part of this problem where the the we need to find out the probability for three times in 25 successive years so in this case r is equal to 3 n is as usual 25 p and q values are again as usual that we have used to solve case a substituting these values in the binomial distribution equation we obtain the probability as 0 0.0034 taking our discussion forward let's solve third case which is not occurring at all in 25 successive years so how to solve this part here the r is equal to 0 and n is equal to 25 so if you substitute r equal to 0 in the equation you will find that you are only left with q power n so here this is q which is 0 0.9875 and power n is nothing but 25 so substituting this value you get the probability of occurrence for this condition as 0 0.7302 and if we move ahead and look at the last case which is at least once in 25 successive years so it is simple you have to just subtract the previous response previous response was this one where we estimated the probability of not occurring at all in 25 successive years so what will be the probability of at least once so that, that is the numeric probability so 1 minus the probability of not occurring at all in 25 successive years which is what we have obtained here 1 minus not occurring at all in 25 years this is 1 minus 0 0.7302 and you get 2.2698
So if we look at all these values that we have obtained for all these cases, you see that for this given conditions, what is the probability that the event occurs once in 26 years? Here it is 0.23. In the second case, for three times it is very less. So you see that probability that, that the event can occur once is 23%. And the probability that the event will occur three times is 0.3%, very less. And the probability that the event will never occur in that 25 years is 73%. So you can see that there is, there is high chances, that is 73% chance that the event will never occur in the 25 60 years. Likewise, for the fourth case, we see that what if at least once the event occurs in the 25 successive years, that comes out as almost 27%. So in this way, you are able to gauge about the given, based on the given conditions, you can identify what are the probabilities of occurrence of different number of events in the given successive years. So I hope you were able to analyze all these two concepts and different conditions that we have taken into account while solving the problems of adequacy of ring stations and frequency analysis of a point and fold. Thank you for being there. Stay connected for more problem solving sessions for the course surface water hydrology. Thank you.